first of all, I feel like lots of closure, lots of endings, lots of new beginnings are kind of um, swirling around you, okay? And basically what this means is uh, take lessons from the past, uh, move on forward and, you know, um, incorporate those lessons into future relationships, future work endeavors, future plans that you have going for yourself. Because um, everything that you've lived through, I feel like it has to happen in that specific order. And while you were going through it, it, it felt quite painful and you don't really understand why it's happening to you. But I feel as if there has been a major, major growth spurt for many of you. And things are looking up. Many of you are moving forward with like new burst of energy when it comes to your professional development, okay? So I feel like this year was about taking on additional responsibilities. It forces you out of your comfort zone and it forces you um, to kind of like take initiative. Gone are, are the days where you just kind of sit back and wait for things to fall on your lap, like projects, um, clients, uh, opportunities. Um, I feel like this entire year encapsulates, you know, the whole maturation process where we need to be a little bit more uh, faster on the uptake, where we need to, you know, not wait around for things anymore and we have to be proactive if we want to make changes, we have to kind of get out there and grab opportunities as they come in. So the time to kind of sit back and wait for things, it's done and over with. And I feel like many of you have come to the realization that time is ticking. Life is slipping away. If you're on the sidelines of life, if you have been especially on the more passive end, I see many of you looking at your hands and you know the hands are a major indicator when it comes to aging because we do everything with our hands. I see many of you looking at your hands and you're just like, I'm getting older. What am I um, building for myself? What do I have to prove for myself? What legacy am I you know, leaving behind? And so the, the whole concept of aging of time and progression and, and movement and you know, time slipping away from us, mortality, all of those things are being brought up and especially so around birthday time when we get a little bit like um, when that reality check kind of hits us. Oh no, I'm one year older. You know, what am I doing with my life? What do I have to prove for myself? I feel like Sagittarius went through that a couple of years back, uh, a couple of months back. And I feel like for you guys, it's happening for you as we move into November. And, you know, don't um, fret over it. Definitely make whatever changes you need to, but I feel like the whole entire year has prepared you for this moment in time where it's really forcing you out of your comfort zone. It's forcing you to socialize. It's forcing you to take initiative and steer your life in the direction that you want. We can't sit on the sidelines anymore watching life kind of slip away, okay? So that's um the first message i feel there is another message coming into the picture and um with hard work comes rewards okay i mean it, it's just the way that energies work and in a way we could think of it as karma we can think of it as paying it forward we can think of it as our, our just rewards but or even some people might not even believe in that. And they're just like, through the sheer strength of my will and determination, I'm going to make things happen. And that's fine. But I feel like, you know, energetically, what we put out to the universe is what we get back. So if you want to put in 10% of the work, you're getting back 10% of the re rewards. If you want to expedite the process and, you know, put in 110%, then that's what you're getting back. And um, this is the month where you are going to see things coming back full circle, okay? Re just rewards coming to the ones that have earned it, that have worked hard for it. And so it's a really pleasant energy. It's like what goes around comes around. Um, there is a sense of nostalgia um, as you reminisce about the past, people from the past, relationships from the past. And um, I feel like don't dwell too long and too too much in that memory lane process, okay? Don't walk down memory lane. 
um, life moves forward and I feel like you're closing out a cycle and you need to advance forward. Um, so let me talk about your love reading. First of all, this is the energy that you bring to the table. This is a really good card. We have the emperor. This is a person, well, the uh, people see you as this person. You embody this energy. Your love interest, your partner sees you as this. This is somebody who takes care of business. Okay, um, no matter what happens around you, you're very, very calm and collected and very stable. And whatever chaos is, is happening around you, you handle it with a lot of um, ease. Okay, so from an outsider's perspective, looking in, you're reclining and uh, you're relaxed and you look into the future. You're not looking into the past. I usually think of, you know, the past as um, looking in the other direction. But you're looking to the, the future. You're anticipating certain outcomes. You're anticipating certain courses of action. You're anticipating, like, you know, everything that I've worked up to now, this is um, how it's going to play out for me for the next few years. So I feel like you're in a very grounded, mature state, and you're looking at situation through a lens of realism, which is really good. This is someone who is very serious minded, okay? They don't really have time for relationships and silly lovers quarrels. I feel like the, the big relationship issues are the ones that are actually big. You know, where are we going with this relationship? I feel like if you have um, things that are on your mind, you will voice it to your partner. You're not going to be holding back. The emperor doesn't really hold back. The emperor sees something as either being important or minuscule and the emperor um, addresses issues with an air of authority. So some of you are business owners. Some of you employ other people. Some of you manage people, supervise people, and you have people doing the work for you. So you might be monitoring their progress. So they see you as someone who is very stable, very apt. And some of you, even though you're single, People around you think that you're married or think that you're in a relationship or think that you're slightly out of reach and intimidating, okay? So project more of the friendly vibe. I feel like for many of you, the past few months, you have really buried yourself in the work arena to kind of get over, to learn things, to master your craft and your skills, to hone in on your skills. But I feel like there has been some recent um, disappointments in relationships and you use work kind of like as a therapy to get away to kind of forget okay so you might have turned into a workaholic mainly to um, not think about you know some disappointments in your love life how your partner feels about you this card can go one of two ways this is what I call the heartbreaker somebody who has recently broken up with somebody and is still mulling over that past relationship, someone who's dealing with regrets, or they see you as a heartbreaker, somebody who breaks hearts, who goes around and, you know, um, dates many people, dates many beautiful, beautiful women, or date many uh, good-looking men, and breaking hearts all over the place. Not that you're a player, not that you're running around on people, but I feel like you're looking for love and you want somebody that meets certain standards and criteria. The emperor looks for his, his or her counterpart, which is the empress. So I feel like you have high standards and, and certain expectations about who you want to incorporate into your household, into your dating life, and who you don't want to. So when you're going around meeting a lot of, you know, just attractive people, but they don't really have a lot of substance, you're not really going to go with it, okay? I feel like with I, I feel like with many, many Scorpios, um, the people that you're dating, they don't have to be the most beautiful, attractive people, but they have to have something admirable about them, something interesting, something going on in their lives. They can't just be, you know, the trophy wife, the trophy husband, the trophy eye candy. Um, that's not going to do it for you long term. And you're aware of that, too, because you want something substantial and you want a deep connection and you want somebody who's on your same level. So I feel like you guys, 
um, if you if it were just you know a fling, a one night stand, a short term relationship, it doesn't matter who you date. But if it's somebody that you take home to your to meet the parents, that you introduce around your friends, that you bring and incorporate into your household, that you plan a future with, you're not going to be dating somebody who's just eye candy. You have a few people that are around you that are like this, you know, a little bit more on the superficial end, wanting superficial conversations and relationships. And I see you, you looking at that and kind of saying no to it, um, giving them kind of, you know, taking a step back from them just so they don't get mixed messages and doing you, like focusing on yourself, focusing on your work and your financial situation. But I definitely feel for many of you, you've come out of some bad relationships or some bad situations and you're trying to get your life in order. I have the wheel of fortune and this is, you know, things coming back around. So be careful about exes, the energy of exes coming into the picture, ruminating about the past, wondering about, you know, what ifs uh, with past energies. OK, lesson learned, move forward. OK, um, the person that you're dealing with, this can be a partner or this can be somebody that is interested in you. And I feel there is somebody interested in you. We have here the Six of Pentacles. This person is very, very, very uh, kind. Okay, This is a card about generosity. Somebody who thinks about other people, who does things just intuitively to make the situation better for other people. And it's somebody who has a sense of social awareness. Okay. They give to the poor, they give to the homeless, they um, take care of dogs at shelters, they care about the environment, they care about, you know, climate change, they care about pollution, like they care about the bigger picture and the the, um, the overarching, you know, problems that pit, plague humanity. So they, they have a lot of um, love for mankind. So this is someone who's very generous with their time, their resources, and their... Whatever they do, they think about other people. So you're dealing with someone who has a really, really good heart. Um, they're making the way that you feel about them. They're making a lot of great strides in their life. This is like leaps and bounds above expectations. You're meeting somebody that you find to be very impressive after a series of dates or meetings with people who are very uh, mediocre and superficial, you're finally meeting somebody who's actually, you know, leaps and bounds above your expectations. And this person sees you as the emperor. So they feel like it's a good match, but they are a little bit intimidated by you because the emperor is a little bit cold and distant. And he or she, you know, the your embodiment as this is you're a little bit of a loner. You like your you like your, your space. You like your me time. Scorpios love their me time. Um, you like your territory. You like the comforts of your personal space. And so they don't want to solicit you to go out too much because they don't want to deal with the rejection. And um, I also feel like they want to get to know you. They want to reach out. They want more communication and they want to be able to come see you. And I feel like you know, you, you know, this person is interested in you because Scorpios, you guys just know you read people really well. You pick up energies. You're very intuitive. Many of you are very psychic. So you get these hunches that this is a person that, you know, is your equal. And there's going to be opportunities here coming in this week for you to meet somebody amazing. Um, and to allow the communication to start. But I feel like they're initiating the conversation. If you're interested, it's kind of like the balls in your court to get things moving, okay? Because once again, the emperor, he observes, he doesn't speak much, but he observes and he sees everything. So I feel like nothing is really uh, going undetected in your world and you, you know where the other person stands. They're a really, really nice person. Some of you are just at a point where you're okay with not dating and this person is coming at you and you don't want to lead them on. Okay, so you're trying to do the right thing, which is fine. Uh, the person is very nice. It's a really kind, kind-hearted type of a person. And so they deserve the best. They de deserve, you know, if you're not interested, they deserve to know. 
but I feel like it, it can be a really good uh, union here. But I feel some of you are still dwelling on some things from your past, some emotional hang up, some disappointment, and you might not be ready to date just yet. And then for others, um, those in relationships, your partner is uh, heading into some major, major financial wave. Okay, so they're they're uh, they're able to get a lot of achievements in the world. They're able to land good jobs. They're able to like be very financially stable. So I feel like that's going to help the relationship. In other areas of your life, what we have here is um, Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups deals with ideas, dreams, fantasy, okay? Uh, plans that are half-baked. They're, they're still being thought out. They're not in the implementation stage just yet. They're still being thought over, being molded over. Uh, you're still doing the blueprint. You're still trying to lay out, you know, everything that needs to, where everything needs to go. I feel for many of you, you're looking at accounting, like um, uh, QuickBooks come to mind, as well as Excel spreadsheets. You're, you're itemizing things. And I feel for many of you, you're already preparing for tax season. So you're itemizing things, you're putting things away, you're thinking about, you know, um, assets, you're thinking about liabilities, you're thinking heavily about uh, some type of financial disclosure. So... You're allocating certain funds for certain things. Um, you're allocating, you know, like, um, it's, it's like budgeting. Going through a budget, creating a spreadsheet for yourself so that you can um, figure out how much do I have to spend or how much money can I allocate towards a vacation, how much can I spend every week without going over my budget. So you're doing something along those lines where it is all about financial planning and financial accounting, like just accounting overall. Um, so this week is, I feel like, you know, it's not like overly busy, but it, it deals with some important things that you're trying to get uh, moving in your life in a positive direction. We also have here the Two of Wands, and this is the first card that fell out. The Two of Wands usually indicates some type of travel, some type of movement, um, having some plans, and then bringing it, bringing it out into the world. Letting the world uh, see, letting you know everyone see what you're up to and showing the world some plans or ideas that you have kept hidden, okay? So the Two of Wands, this is the implementation. But I feel things are a little bit premature, so you might want to go back to the drawing board and to redo them and, and to discuss them further. And we also have the chariot here. This is a card about great strides and success. I feel like many of you, um, somebody significant to you is headed into like a lot of success. Okay. So it's like a, I, I see here a couple, two of wands, the chariot moving in the same direction, achieving a lot of success, moving into a space where they are both, you know, trying to they're, they're both kind of like on the same level. So if one person has been rightfully employed and then the other person is underemployed, the underemployed person is finally catching up. So income levels, power dynamics in relationships are really balancing out. And then I also feel like lots of success coming into the picture for you. Clients, people, um, people calling you, emailing you, contacting you as well. Can you do this? Can you do that? So you have a lot of options, a lot of choices to choose from. Which project do I take? Which one do I do first? And um, you're kind of in high demand. So multiple people can come to you. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you help me with this? Not that they're not paying you, but I feel like it's a part of your responsibilities. But you have many, many options that are on the table for you. Um, for some of you as well, there are plans here with the Hierophant. Family planning wanting to expand the family unit, wanting to uh, get into a bigger house I'm seeing for some of you, getting into like, um, so for example, you're thinking about getting into a bigger house first before you have a child. Um, I also feel as well family planning and that also includes, you know, if mom and dad are getting older, do we move them into a retirement home Do or do we take care of them. So I feel like some of you might be dealing with elderly parents, elderly grandparents um, that you are having to kind of take care of, having to, they're, they're a little bit more reliant on you. And they're going to tell you about, you know, what their plans are, 
when it comes to retirement or when it comes to them getting older and they're no longer as mobile and agile as they used to be and what are the contingency plans like do they want to go to a home do they want you to take care of them so lots of family planning in general estate planning too coming into the picture and so all these ideas all of these plans are percolating around you but in terms of being able to do anything about them I still feel like your plans are being held up by other people okay so it's like calling the client and then waiting for feedback playing phone tag and not being able to make a move not being able to see that financial payout just yet and so and even if you know you're you're doing family planning and um, you're doing estate planning you're still waiting on the final okay from the estate representative from the grandparents from the elderly parents for example and it's still being um, it's still being discussed nothing is really finalized just yet okay um, so I hope th the reading is helpful for you guys I hope it's applicable and um, I wish you all the best okay